Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the USA made Heretic Wraith V3 Integral. Holy moly. A USA integral. What's an integral? It means when the entire frame is milled from a single block of material, in this case titanium, versus knives that are made from two separate pieces of titanium and then screwed together, you know, with a backspace or a standoffs or something like that. No, this is an integral. Um, listen, people always get all bent out of shape about the price tag. Number one, this is USA made. Not like, well, we can call it USA made because the majority of it's made here and then we outsource as much as possible. No. I mean, like, as far as I understand with Heretic, it's like 98% of the knife is made here in the USA. This is not a large scale operation. They can, you know, produce knives on a decent scale, but this isn't CRKT, right? This isn't uh, Spyderco or anything like that. No, it's still what I would uh, call a small shop operation and making integral titanium framed knives here in the United States this way is an expensive process, period. If it weren't, we would see a, I mean, hey, there's a huge pocket for competition if that's not actually the case, right? But no, the reason that we don't see it is because it is expensive to do. So this is an expensive knife. It's a nearly fully USA produced knife, right? If you're not into that stuff, if you, you don't care about the integral nature, this might not be for you. But I find it interesting and I want to talk about it because I don't see these. We don't, we just don't see a lot of USA integrals. So I want to give you guys my thoughts on this and tell you if I think it's worth the money to the people who specifically go after stuff like this. Thank you so much to my buddy Joe for loaning this to me for review. It will go back to Joe when I'm done. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's get a measurement. This is not a small knife. The overall length. The Wraith V3, and by the way, they have less expensive versions. The, the other Wraith variants are two pieces, so they're less expensive. Um, so the overall length is coming in about eight and a half. No, 8.65. Blade length is coming in at, I'm going to call that 3.75 inches, and then your cutting edge is all of three and a half inches. So a, a larger knife, right? Let's do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you see can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the... 8010. You can see here, not quite as tall, but definitely at least as long. How about up against the Demco AD 20.5? Quite a bit bigger there. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? Definitely a little larger than both. And then finally, how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Love that green. And the uh, Hogue Deca. Okay, how's the action on this guy? This is where I'm a little... Uh, it's a little, it's a little bit weird. Okay, number one, uh, when he sends me, Joe uses this. This is not a knife that is babied. This is a knife that Joe uses. Now I carried this, and initially I was like, "Wow, that's a lot of knife, right?" But it's, it's cool though. The action um, was honestly, it was falling shut um, right away. But I noticed that the blade initially was slightly off center. I've got it centered now. Um, but it's still a, a little bit tight. Now the action's all right, and the weight of the blade is helping it, right? Um, but it doesn't feel glassy smooth. It feels all right, right? I'm not gonna say that it's bumpy or anything like that. It just feels tight. Um, I would imagine over time it will continue to break in. It might have something to do with the coating. Usually they don't coat it around the area. Well, actually you can see the detent ball is riding directly on that, and it's wearing its race in, right? But it's okay. The detent feels a little weak. It's a little thuddy. Right, there's no detent lash, and honestly, it flips just fine. Disengagement is, yeah. There's a little tiny bit of lock stick, which isn't that big of a deal, and this, the lock bar sticks up, but man, it is aggressive. Not just the bumps here, but it is a 90 degree drop off right there. So disengaging it, I'd say after three or four times, you're gonna feel it on your uh, on your thumb there, definitely. Um, not bad, not the worst thing in the whole world. I just wish the action felt a little bit more like a knife in this tier. The problem is, is that while 
It is an integral, and that, you know, regardless of how you feel about that, whatever your feelings tell you, that's one thing. But then there's the factual, right, objective part of it, which is that it, it does cost more money. It, it just does, right? We, we can't, like, feeling it away. It, creating this the way that it's created factually costs a lot of money. So it puts it into the same price tier as some of your... Um, Oh, at this point, I mean, we're, we are approaching Herman. We're approaching Koenig, right? We're kind of into that, like, you know, more expensive than Hinderer knives, more expensive than Chris Reeve knives, right? More expensive than Les George knives. We're, we're past that and we're getting into, you know, this upper tier. While the action feels honestly not quite as good as even Hinderer or, well, you know, Chris Reeve has a totally different thing going on, but... The, the feeling of quality in the action is kind of lackluster. It's fine and it will work, but I'm not sure that it's what people expect when they spend this money. Now, if you're not an action snob, it's hard not to be at this price point, right? But if you're not an action snob, then you might not care, right? Because there's plenty, of, there's plenty else here to enjoy, um, legitimately. But I, I just needed to be, um, you know, I needed to try and, and get that translated. The flipper tab actually feels pretty good and the leverage you get off of it is fine. And I think, you know, by the time you get it lifted, there's so much weight and mass in the blade uh, that it, it's going to fire. And it, and you know, it when it hits, it, it feels good. I mean, the flip is good. The detent, I think, just needs to be a little bit heavier and it just doesn't have that click. It's just like, dunk, you know. Um, anyways, let's do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's pretty thick. <laughs> pretty thick. Um, so initially I was like, is this a contoured? No, it's not. Uh, it is flat titanium. That would have been wild. <laughs> there is a big difference, right, when we're talking about the titanium, how it's machined. If it's contoured, whoa, the machines that do that are way more expensive. Um, but no, we've, we've got flat titanium. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that because they've chamfered this um, in a way that really makes it feel contoured. It, it really does have a, a good quality feel just holding it, right? Um, so it's it's quite a bit thicker. And then length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. Uh, this is a big boy. Um, not not quite as tall. It, it's, it's approaching it, though, including the flipper tab. It's just, it's actually longer than the PM2 and way thicker, right? Not just in the frame, but in the blade, everything like that. Let's weigh it. What are we actually looking at here for materials? So we have um, MagnaCut. Got serial number. Serial number 10. Nice. Um, serial number uh, 10, but we, we have uh, MagnaCut, a big, thick piece of MagnaCut. We have titanium, the whole frame, right? And then we have carbon fiber, a little bit of frag texture on that carbon fiber. It's a lot of material, and there is no internal milling. You can't really do that on, you know, an integral. Well... You could, but you'd have to kind of go all the way through. You'd have to almost skeletonize it, uh, like like from the outside. So uh, the weight is seven point five ounces. It is a big boy. I feel like if you're buy if you're looking at this knife, the weight might not bother the people who are actually interested in it, right? But obviously, if you're used to carrying smaller, lighter weight knives, that's probably going to be way too heavy for you. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. One of the biggest, uh, my, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. Okay. One of the advantages of an integral, right? Because people always say, oh, what's the point? Well, there's hardly any steps for disassembly. You just take the pivot out and then you can pull the blade out and you're good. I mean, the, 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 you don't need to take the frame apart. You don't need to take the pocket clip. There's no reason to take the pocket clip off because you can't switch it to the other side anyway in this case. So... There's no reason to do that. There's definitely no reason to take the lock bar. You, you don't, like, if you're, if you're like, but I like to maintain my knives. You don't take the screws out of the, the over travel and the lock bar insert and then, like, <laughs> polish them. You don't do that. So you leave all these screws in there. You just, it's just the pivot. And then you take the blade out if you want to do that. Most of the time you just blow it out with compressed air. You don't even need to do that. But an integral just has fewer parts. Now this has a scale on top of the uh, the frame on one side, which is kind of neat. They didn't need to do that, but they did, and it's got three screws in it holding it in there. But you don't need to take that off either. These body screws, I think, are actually T10. Yeah, I think almost every other screw on the side is a T10. Pocket clip screw is a T10. Yeah, all these, all these screws are T10. 
Uh, same with the scale screws. Now the pivot, which I, like I said, I adjusted. That is a T25. <laughs> I love that, man. You ne you never have to worry about uh, dicking up the pivot with something like a T25. That is just great. It is not free spinning, by the way. I adjusted it without the, at least, at least, you know, if, if it's not a D-shaped barrel or a captive barrel, uh, the uh, it doesn't move. Um, the, the friction in there from, from the tolerances keeps it from moving. So it was actually very easy to adjust. I love integrals for that reason. Number one, it is cool that it's a solid piece of titanium. It just feel, even if it's not technically more durable, it feels more durable, feels more solid, and it is much easier to take apart and put back together, and there's just fewer parts, right? It's just less fussiness with an integral. So that's cool. Um, we already weighed it. Let's measure the blade stock thickness. I'm going to guess that that comes in at about 190 thousandths. That is a pretty substantial blade all the way down. Mm-hmm. No. Even more. Ooh. About a fifth of an inch there. Thick blade. Okay. Meat and potatoes time. The Wraith does look nice. It has that, you know, sort of American tactical knife look to it. And the combination of the blue and the black it just looks cool. Um, and it, it, it does, for those of you who are just like, I just want like, I, I don't want anything that's like monster overbuilt. I don't need anything that's like a quarter inch. I just want a good, robust knife. And I like the idea of having something that's, you know, just that heavy duty feeling, right? And will still function. And, you know, and, and if you're, and if on top of that, you're into integrals, well, then this is it. This is what you're after, right? If you're not the action snob, if you're not, you know, you don't need the complex machining or anything. It's, this might be for you because it really doesn't have anything ultra complicated going on. And I think that's really the only reason they managed to get it down to the price that they did. If you'd have asked me before I saw this and maybe one other integral, and they both happen to be pretty simple integrals, I would have thought in 2023, it's not possible to do an integral for under like $700. So it's pretty amazing that they got this to where it is. And if you wonder, I'll just tell you what the price is right now. It's about 600 bucks. Blade HQ, I found one that was on sale, on sale for 550 and that's because it's serrated. And listen, if you like serrated, that's fine. But... I'm going to tell you, it's pretty obvious that people in this price tier mostly prefer non-serrated. That's why you see so many serrated versions of knives sitting in stock, because they're just not quite as popular. So I think the only reason that that one's down at 550 is because they haven't managed to get rid of it. Um, there may still be a few of these floating around out there, but this was definitely the more, as as is usually the case, is more popular one. So the, the actual base price of this is about 600 bucks. That's pretty amazing. Yes, yeah, $600 is very expensive. Yes, $600 will get you a better feeling, higher higher quality feeling knife, you know, for sure, right? And a lot of that at this price tier is, is what it's about. It's about the feeling that it gives you, right? Because everything is going to be expensive to make if, the, if it's made, the, you know, authentically, like in-house USA, this price tier, right? So you have to ask yourself what kind of person you are, I guess. This is cool that it's an integral. It, it's amazing. But listen, if they if they machined this like the way that Koenig machined it, right? <laughs> let's be real. If Koenig made an integral Arius, let's put it that way. Uh, I don't even think people want to know what that's going to cost, right? So, it, you know, it's kind of, we've got a teeter-totter, a multi-directional teeter-totter here where we're adding something to one side and pulling something away from the other, right? So it depends on which side of that teeter-totter you want to sit on. Like I said, if you're big into the, you know, just the tactical American aggressive look and feel and you're like, ah, I happen to like integrals, right? Love stuff that's made in the USA. Well, here it is, right? But you're not going to get, you know, that approaching Koenig Arius or approaching uh, approaching Herman Knives feel. So that's, you know, we have to kind of set your expectations there. Uh, MagnaCut, I have no idea what they're, you know, where they're heat treating this to. I couldn't find exactly what. The nice thing is, is most people, most in, in this industry are hitting it, you know, at least within that wide range. Uh, it's a, a lot of people prefer it higher. They like to see the 63s and the 64, but Magna Cut will perform just fine within the 60 to 64 range, at least as far as I can tell. Um, and a lot more of that has to do with geometry. Now, this is an incredibly thick geometry, and I'll tell you, it is not 
a great slicer. Uh, now he's used this a little bit, but you can see here what's happening. The edges of the paper are being lifted, so this is more of a tear. Now even if you were to really sharpen this thing down and get it super razor, it's just very thick behind the edge. I mean, it, look at the flat here. The flat runs out 75% the length of the blade, and then we start to taper down, right? We've got a fifth of an inch thick stock, and then we come down. Look at this. We come down to a pretty darn robust edge, right? Now, uh, on, a, on a knife like this, I mean, that some, a lot of people just like that geometry. And I'll tell you, you, you really won't have much of an issue with edge damage or even or tip damage on a knife like this. I mean, you it's just robust all the way around. So if you don't need it to be the sliciest thing in the world, then you might enjoy that, right? But obviously, again, just kind of calibrate your expectations here. On one side, it says wraith and serial number and all this other stuff that probably doesn't need to be there. And, and then on this side, we have nothing. And it honestly looks a lot better on this side. I kind of like the scales here with the texturing in between. I think I could have done without just the extended tic-tac-toe board, right? Just the carbon fiber. Or, truthfully, if it had saved me another 50 bucks, I think I would have just gone straight integral frame with no scale. But it's kind of neat. I also kind of like, it's, it's interesting to see what people do back here with the spine of an integral because it's otherwise just like a flat piece. It's just nothing, right? So there's usually a pattern back here. In this case, we have three thin fullers. Pretty cool. There is a lanyard thing milled into it, so that's nice. Pocket clip only on one side. I hate these uh, ceramic ball clips. I, I don't like them. They're so pinchy, but some people do, right? If you like it, great. If you don't like it, it's whatever. I, I personally don't like it. Ergonomically, it's pretty good. This is very much a blocky knife. It's thick and blocky, and while they have managed to chamfer it here, there's still like a hard edge. I wish they had rounded it more right here. Right, it's it's okay. I'd I'd give it a B minus. Right, not bad. This area down here is a bit less comfortable than than up here. And the pocket clip, it's not bad. You can feel it. They knocked it down. Right, it's a milled clip. It's okay. I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's terrible. It's not. It's just a, a little bit awkward considering we have such classic knife lines. Right, it it looks like it would be pretty comfortable, and it's okay. It's just not as comfortable as it looks like it would be. I do like this big fat pivot color. I think that's cool and it's adding a lot of character to it. It's highlighting the pivot area. I think it looks good and they did it on both sides. I also like that they gave the um, the over travel a different shape. This is a hexagonal over travel stop which I've never seen before. Um, so that's that's cool. Um, and I do, I'm, I'm glad that it's there because the pocket clip, there's nothing guarding it or stopping it from coming over other than, you know, the lock bar insert, which honestly doesn't double as the over treble. So I'm glad that that's there, right? Um, the only downside to this is it's not that common shape that we see with striders or hinders. So customizing that is not an option. It's just, this is what you get, right? But that's fine. Uh, and then we have a huge steel lock bar insert. Um, so that's great. The, the lockup geometry on this, despite the slight lock stick, is absolute. This thing's not going anywhere. It is very thoroughly locked out. And then contact, you can see, is like 50%. So that's great. The geometry is good. Um, we have no double clutch. That's good. No pivot lash. It's consistent. It's just tight. And again, kind of a thuddy detent. And then I did get the, the centering perfect, but it wasn't initially. No detent lash. Is it worth it? Uh, the vast majority of people, this just isn't going to be for them. This is just a very, like, niche. I mean, this is like a niche within a niche within a niche, right? You got to be hardcore wanting to buy something that is made almost entirely in the United States. You want, you're going to, you got to uh, have to want, like, this look, and you're going to have to have a huge amount of personal value in an integral frame. If, not all of those together are very important to you. I got to be very specific. All of those things together must be very, very important to you. If that's not the case, exactly that, then this isn't for you. I like all this stuff, and I think this is really impressive that they managed to do it. But very few people, the market for something like this, is so, that's, that's why we don't see it. It's very expensive to do, right? The 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 group of the groups of people who are always like everything's a rip off and they're, oh, yeah, they're ripping it. Those people have such a hard time explaining why we don't see more USA integrals. That's like the <laughs> that's like the the silver bullet for them, right? 
because the reason that we don't see them is because they are expensive to do. <laughs> Making anything in the USA, like entirely in the USA, is expensive. Machining titanium in the USA is expensive, right? So this is one of those things that it's, it's kind of proves it. The, the reason that we just don't see like this huge market of USA integral knives is because it's not cheap to do. And it is kind of risky, right? It's always going to end up being an expensive thing. And they can't be produced in large enough quantities to be beneficial for some of these smaller companies to do them all the time. It's neat that they managed to do this. And it's impressive that they can do it for and they can charge 600 bucks for it. I don't know how much money they're making off of. It can't be a whole lot, right? But it's neat. If you like all that stuff together, I think you might like this. But if you're not into, you know, one or all of those things, then yeah, absolutely not. This isn't going to be for you. It's cool, right? But that's that's really, that's my honest take. Joe, thank you so much for sending this. It's always nice to check out something that's a little bit different. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.